Okay, here's a video for Lieutenant Baldwin on YouTube, along with my sales pitch for a solution to your uh, gate controller problem. Okay, the reason your gate controller system isn't going to work right with those, sol those uh, Harbor Freight solar panels, it's not really a problem with the quality on those solar panels. They're okay panels. They produce about 45 watts total. However, the, the system voltage on those is around, uh, I think it's 17.9 volts, and you'll find that on a label on the back of each panel. shows what the maximum voltage is. Now that voltage drops as soon as you hook that panel up to anything. And it probably is going to drop to around uh, <coughs> about 13, 14 volts while it's charging. Um, and they nicknamed that voltage range. 12-volt uh, systems because the nominal voltage is 12 volts, which is what your battery would be. Although a fully charged 12-volt battery is probably going to read about 13.5 on your voltmeter. To charge a 24-volt um, system on that, you're you're actually going to be um, you, you're going to run two 12-volt systems in parallel. So so. I'm sorry, in series, which means that you're you're actually going to be producing almost almost 40 volts uh, to charge 24 volts. You you have to get 30 volts after everything's hooked up, and and you know, about the only way you're going to do that is either purchase what is loosely called 24 volt panels, which actually um, produce around 37, 38 volts, but it drops as soon as it hooks up to a battery. Or you hook your 12 volt panels up in in um, series. Now the good news is that there are charge controllers that are made to automatically sense the type of power that's being hooked up and that needs to be fed out. And part of the reason there's a lot of stuff out there in 24 volt is because that's what's used in uh, military vehicles uh, that were made to be NATO compatible even though they may not be part of NATO, like uh, Israeli military stuff is all 24 volt, uh, South African stuff is mostly 24 volt. You're also going to see 24 volt equipment in the trucking industry. You're not going to see it as much on heavy equipment as you are, let's say, on some big rigs and a few of the higher end motor coaches and stuff. They'll actually run a dual voltage system. Um, and part of that is that 24 volt gives you a little bit more range to work with. Now those little Harbor Freight kits come with a charge controller that is 12 volt only. The, the uh, panels on there can be wired by hooking them up in, in series, two at a time, to become a 24 volt system. But you need an even amount of panels, which means with your three panel system, you're going to need to either add a panel or subtract a panel to be able to create a uh, 24 volt charging system. The reason that little alarm on your box is freaking out is because panel voltage tends to be high until it's hooked up to a battery. So that little alarm was going off because it's thinking, wow, well we're above 12 volts but we're below 24 volts. And then as that panel gets more and more sunlight, it's producing more amps, which makes that little alarm uh, start to fade, but the little alarm never totally goes out because the thing isn't getting its full 24 volts. It may go up to 19 in full sunlight if you're feeding it straight off the panel, but it's, it's also going to kind of screw with your battery and, and some of that kind of stuff. Okay, so what are you going to do to get your 24 volt system? Well, part of it is to get a charge controller that automatically senses and deals with whether or not it's on a 12 or 24 volt system. This one right here is one that will automatically go back and forth. It'll, it'll, it'll check itself back and forth between 12 and 24 volts. Um, now that's for panel voltage. Um, the uh, I I got to check on your battery voltage if you've got your batteries hooked up that way, but we can do a little bit of uh, uh, working on that. The other thing is I can get 24 volt charge control. Is this that I have two or three of these sitting around right now for um, uh, setting up a system? 
The other thing is I have real solar panels. Okay, this small panel is a 50, 50 watt panel. Uh, the larger one's an 80. I also have in boxes uh, some 100 watt panels. Um, that you may think is overkill for your gate opener system, but from the pictures of your property that I've seen, your um, it's in the woods and it's not getting full sunlight, which means whatever solar you put out there is probably, at least around that gate, never going to be operating at 100%, which means you're probably going to need more panel for the system than what the normal specifications would call for, uh, or, or more, more panel for that than, let's say, somebody in Arizona or New Mexico is going to be using, or, or California for that matter. Uh, or even uh, out in the eastern Oregon deserts where um, they, you know, they get a lot of summertime sunlight, but it's, um, you know, the winter time you're, you're, you're going to be operating at about 20% capacity on your panels on a, on a good day in the winter, uh, which means you need more panels. So my suggestion is it, it has to be two panels. Uh, you, you could probably get by with two of the 50 watt panels. If you get two of the 80s, you're, you're going to be in safer shape. Um, if you get two of the 80s plus this one charge controller, um, I, I think we're going to come in south of 500 bucks for that package, and it's it's enough power for you to deal with. The other thing that's going to happen is you you might as well put another little charging station out by the gate, maybe a little shed or something like that. Uh, you can take advantage of those panels to charge other batteries. Um, we could maybe even run a dual voltage system because I, I would not plug these into that controller board for your gate just on the chance that maybe we're going to freak out that controller board and do something wrong there. I think we're going to be a little bit better off um, just hooking a charge controller up to the batteries. Now another way this can be done is we get the 100 watt panels, we'll use one charge controller per panel, but that charge controller maxes out at 10 amps. Um, that, that'll that work with a 100 watt panel just fine. In fact, I'll look at my specifications. It would probably work with two of the 100 watt panels just fine, just from the standpoint that those things are never going to be at 100% if they're out in the woods under some trees. But um, I've got this stuff here in stock in Portland. Uh, I sell it on the local Craigslist. Uh, you, you, you can get a little bit lower prices going mail order with it. If you want to get 24 volt panels that are pole mounted, I, I got a place I work with, we can order that from. Uh, these, you, you could kind of improvise your mounting. My suggestion is put a little gatehouse in, a little shed out there, put them on the roof of the shed where they're kind of up, out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. Um, just a little shed, gatehouse type thing out there. You could even make it look like a guard shack if you want to. And then, um, the other thing is, for your survival situations, you put a little shed or gatehouse out on the edge of your property. Uh, it can work as a bus stop for the kids, a pick up and drop off point for uh, honor system bartering, which a lot of people in rural areas will do with low value items like eggs. Uh, you know, your newspaper and package deliveries, you got a little gatehouse out there with maybe a a one-way lock mechanism where your UPS FedEx guy can throw some boxes in there and lock it on its way out after the delivery or, or you can give them a key code to the little little gatehouse if you got outgoing packages you, you know your FedEx your UPS guy has a gate code or you can or you can buzz them into it but the idea would be to get the panels up and out of the way on the roof of that little gatehouse um, that's my suggestion, you know, and we could build that quickly or I can just sell you the panels and the charge controller and go from there. But what you're going to need is you're going to need more powerful panels. You need a pair of panels, which you're going to do either by eliminating one of the Harbor Freight panels or adding a panel so that you have two pairs. And uh, that special charge controller and some wiring. I, I've got some solar panel wiring stuff here. Um, but basically, whenever you look at the backs of, uh, you know, regular commercial panels, they, they have these little hookup boxes. There's usually a little specification thing here. Um, I have the specification information from the manufacturer on these two. Um, but it's, it's usually not a problem to hook these things up in series up to 48 volts worth, which I, I believe would be four panels. If you start going above that, then it can roast uh, the wiring. 
so you don't want to do that. But the Harbor Freight panels use car stereo type little connectors, which is just fine. But my guess is that it, 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 with the amount of power, I, I don't know how often you go in and out of that gate, but those, those panels operating in in a shaded area just they don't they don't they don't make all that much electricity. Uh, that 45 watts they they're rated for is for clean, clear, direct sunlight under optimum conditions. And then you you've got you know your charge controls, your inverters, your little maintenance maintenance drop uh, load drop on the batteries. That that actually sucks up a lot of that that power that you're making. Uh, I've got a 60 watt uh, worth of Harbor Freight panels on one of my workshop trailers. And it's uh, it's a small trailer, it's a small thing, and that stuff just barely keeps lights going in Oregon weather. Uh, I have a 500 watt system going on the, on that bug out retreat survival home camper trailer thing you, you see in my other videos, and um, you know that that's that's a fair amount of power, but it's rarely operating at 70 or 80 percent, let alone 100 percent, just because of the weather situation. Um, a lot of times I'm just operating at 60%. So when you're looking at Harbor Freight panels only operating at maybe 60 or 70%, those are amorphous panels. Um, these panels here are polycrystalline. Amorphous panels do get a higher percentage of efficiency in low sunlight, but you know you only have 45 watts to begin with. Even if you bump that up to 60 by adding a panel, um, it's not a lot of power. Okay, so um, yeah, my suggestion if you really want to solve that problem, you're going to build a gatehouse, you're going to put a couple of these on the roof, and close a lot of that uh, hardware and stuff you have in the gatehouse, and then have that thing serve as your transfer barter point for uh, honor system bartering that you would do at your property where you're having people maybe drop off milk and eggs and produce and pick up packages and uh, um, maybe make it a school bus stop for the kids or something like that. A uh, little maintenance shed, it have a little light out there, uh, and, and of course you could use it as a controlled access point for your yard guy to uh, stay out of the rain if you're going to run a live uh, checkpoint there at some point in the future. Anyway, I'm going to upload this video and hopefully you'll be watching it soon.